Okay, Heather, push your knees out when you step. So you got foot, knee, and hip. There you go. What we're doing today is we're looking at the athletes, uh, looking at how they move, looking at different imbalances, flexibility, core strength, power endurance, so we can see where their weaknesses really are. We're gonna do some gas exchange with the cyclists and Lucas to do a VO2 max test. We'll split you guys up into two groups. We'll do the cyclists and the tries. We're gonna push you to some degrees and put you in probably some scenarios and, and training environments you haven't done before. Go, go, kick it in, come on. There you go, you're 30 in. You got 30 left, last 30. Great work, stay right on that. Stay right on that pace, stay right on that pace. Yeah, I'm definitely used to just coming from triathlon, longer sort of efforts like miles and even 10Ks have marathons, so to get the sort of VO2 level all out efforts and you just feel it in your butt and you're trying to push with your legs and meanwhile you're just sucking for air, so that thing is tough. <laughs> I wanted to pick something that puts you guys in an awkward position and forced you to stabilize in a position you're not used to. I just want to see my uh, lactate threshold baseline to keep uh, steady and not be spiking up as much as, as, as it's been. And so I heard we got a good baseline and the lactate stayed pretty pretty even most of the way till the end and it's very good so progress is coming along. So with the athletes today we saw different results you know some of them uh, showed really good peak power some of them showed better power endurance uh, we did see some athletes that needed to work on a little more core strength uh, a little more uh, isolateral leg strength but again just opening their eyes up into some different flexibility different core movements that will really help them on the road and help them with their game. This is the amount of studies that have been done on core temperature cooling before exercise. So in the experiment they did basically a slushy, which is zero degrees C, and they did ice water, so just water at zero degrees C. So same temperature, but the ice slushy had like a much bigger impact on performance. We also spent a lot of time working out um, hydration routines, heat acclimatization, and also nutrition routines. If you're doing like tempo stuff, it's like a a group ride or doing like tempo climbs, you could start drinking Prolong like right away. Mm -hmm. For us, it's about being that performance partner. So pushing the envelope, looking beyond just nutrition. We brought them down to the um, Los Angeles Velodrome for aerodynamic testing. It's the first indoor velodrome I've ever been in, so definitely going to see the differences there. I love just being in here, the atmosphere, and um, it's just, yeah, I'm excited to get back on the boards and, and give it a go today. There are four cameras in the sensor bar right here that are constantly triangulating the location of these sensors. They measure their location about 500 times a second. These guys are already putting out a lot of watts, they're already at the peak of the game, so how do we get just a few more watts of power out of them? What's interesting, so this knee flexion number, that's the, that's the angle of your knee at the top of your pedal stroke. Normally we're trying to keep that below 115. You know when you go in the gym and you do a squat and you yeah. go too low and you can't get up? Yeah. It's because you close down that angle too much you've lost your power. It's the same thing on the bike. When you close off that angle too much, you can't produce power until that angle opens back up again. Okay. 155 is too wide for you, yeah? I had you uh, move your hands to the hoods, but keep your back angle the same. Well, you certainly did a good job there. You <laughs> kept your back angle exactly the same at 30 degrees. The past two days, just working with Herbalife, everyone here at the Velodrome with Aerosports, we're at Proactive, has been awesome. I think the biggest thing I learned here is just how much you can save aerodynamically um, and in terms of the energy output just with little tiny changes, even the position of your helmet, position of your arms, you might not think they're a big thing, but to be able to stay in that one position that's proven to be the most aero, and can you hold this for the full distance of a race? Back to regular, back to regular. Feel on the bike is, is so important, and uh, you know, you can get caught up in the numbers and everything, but the way you feel is the most important, because you're the one riding the bike, the bike doesn't ride you, and if it's the other way around, then you'll have, you'll have issues. <laughs> We just wrapped up a two-day performance testing program with our athletes. This is going to help us determine their workout zones and then we can coordinate that back to their personal coaches. 
and we're going to do whatever it takes to help our athletes get faster. It's been awesome and can't thank Herbalife enough for making this possible for us to do. I mean, come October when I'm three minutes up because of the little things we did now, it's huge.